Home Measurement Fundamentals is brought to you by the Winston-Salem Regional Association of Realtors and Piedmont Federal Savings Bank. In the first video in the Home Measurement Fundamentals series, we took a close look at the living area of the home. In order to be considered living area, the space must be heated, finished, and directly accessible from other living areas. We also took a look at the best tools used to measure homes. Our emphasis in this video is the process you will use to measure a home, with our focus being a ranch-style home that includes a basement. Ranch homes are typically some of the easiest to measure, so this is a good place to move next in our video series. Later videos will focus on home styles that are increasingly more complicated. Let's take a look at measuring a typical ranch home with a basement. Once you arrive, Walk around the perimeter of the home, making note of the exterior details. Look for extensions, cantilevers, additions, porches, garages, bay windows, dormers, and other features that impact the square footage and use of the home. Look for signs of a second floor. It's not always obvious that there is a second floor with a finished living space. Very few homes are perfect rectangles. Architectural features will impact your measurement process. This ranch style home is a single story with a basement. There is a porch on the front and a deck on the back. Neither will count within our living area calculation, but notes can be taken and included within the supporting listing details for the property. Tour the inside of the home so that you develop an understanding of how the space is used and what areas will meet the living area criteria. The entire main level of this home is heated, finished, and accessible from other living areas, so all of its square footage will be included in our calculations. A close review of the basement shows that part of it will be included within living area, and part will not. A portion of the basement is actually a crawl space, and a second portion is a garage or storage area. The garage portion is not heated or finished, so it is not included within living area. However, Another portion of the basement is heated, finished, and accessible from other living areas. A full set of internal steps leads from the main floor to the finished portion of the basement. And while there are some exposed pipes and ducts at the ceiling level, those are above the 6 foot 4 inch requirement. As such, this portion of the basement will be included in the living area of the home. It is still advisable to note that this portion of the living area is below grade in the listing data for the home. Once you are back outside, begin sketching and measuring the exterior walls of the home. The square footage of the home is based on exterior measurements. Begin at one corner of the home, measuring the length of each exterior wall. Record each measurement on your sketch and double check each measurement. If you do not have a second person to help with the measurement process, most 100-foot tape measures have a hook on the end for securing the tape to one end of the wall. Or, simply use a screwdriver to secure one end of the tape measure at the ground on one end of the wall you are measuring. Work your way around the home, measuring each wall, recording your measurements on your sketch. Round off measurements to the nearest inch or nearest tenth of a foot if you are using a tape measure with increments in tenth of a foot. Make notes on the sketch of areas that will be included within living area and those which will not, and why they are not included. Those areas may be unfinished spaces or garages, patios, or unheated spaces. Your familiarity with the inside of the home will guide the process of identifying the living areas of the home. All of the square footage on the main floor of our ranch-style home met the living area standards. The front and back of the home were 62 feet, and the sides were 29 feet. This ranch is a perfect rectangle. If you cannot measure certain exterior walls of the home, you will need to measure them from within the home. We have such an instance with this home, with the finished portion of the basement. These instances are common with below grade spaces or finished attics. Go inside and measure the outside perimeter walls. Add six inches or half a foot for each exterior wall and interior wall to account for the thickness of the walls. Working your way through a space in this manner will allow you to gather the exterior wall measurements that you were unable to access or reach from the exterior of the home. Again, 
Keep in mind that even when you are measuring inside of the home, the objective is to obtain the measurements of the exterior walls. The width of the finished portion of the basement was 14 feet 6 inches, and the length was 49 feet 6 inches, including the 6 inch thickness of the interior walls. We will add 6 inches to each of those measurements to account for the thickness of the exterior walls. We also measured the length and width of the unfinished garage space, adding 6 inches to those measures as well. The unfinished garage space will not be included in living area, but it will be noted in the listing data for the property. Taking reference photos outside and inside of the home is a good practice, so those can be reviewed as needed and used to support the overall measurement project. Once your sketch and measurements are complete, compare the overall lengths and widths of the home with their opposite wall lengths and widths. They should equal one another. This is a good way to check your overall measurements of the home. Transfer your sketch details and measurements to graph paper along with your notes about the areas which will be included in living area and those which will not. Now it's a matter of breaking down all of the measurements into rectangles, multiplying the length and width of each rectangle which is to be included in the living area, and adding those together for a total. The sketch and resulting drawing of this house looked like this. Check your math and round off to the overall nearest foot. Make your final notes regarding living area, unfinished space, and other home areas. The main floor of this ranch home was 62 feet by 29 feet, resulting in 1,798 square feet of living area. The finished portion of the basement was 50 feet by 15 feet, yielding an additional 750 square feet of living area. The total living area for the home was 2,548 square feet. You are all set and have reliable information about the home for everyone who will rely on your work to make decisions. Now you have a grasp of the fundamentals of measuring a ranch style home. In the next three videos, we will tackle the measuring of a split level, one and one half story, sometimes called a Cape Cod style, and a two story home. Watch each of them to expand your understanding of the important fine details in the process of measuring homes. Home Measurement Fundamentals is brought to you by the Winston-Salem Regional Association of Realtors and Piedmont Federal Savings Bank. Live local, bank local.